In 1779, Galvez meets with his council of war in New Orleans, and the first thing they say is, we cannot stay. We have no defenses. New Orleans is absolutely open to total destruction. Bernardo de Galvez says, in that case, then what we're going to do is we're going to attack. Unhappily, as he has loaded his ships, a hurricane attacks and destroys his supplies and his ships. Is that going to stop Bernardo de Galvez? Of course not. He is going to reload his little ships, pull them up off the bottom, and then he is going to attack Manchac, Baton Rouge, and without even setting foot in Natchez, he is going to force the British to give up Natchez itself. He talked the British into giving up Natchez. Granaderos de Galvez, the Grenadiers of Galvez. There is a group today, of course, very well-known group that is now becoming more and more popular. There are groups of Granaderos in Houston, in San Antonio, in Galveston, in Washington, D.C., in Pensacola. These Grenadiers support Galvez, and it is these Grenadiers who represent the military that Galvez put together made up of anybody and everybody, including Texans. The first Texas cattle drive actually came out of San Antonio and La Bahia, and it was from those ranches that that cattle drive took cattle to Louisiana to feed Bernardo de Galvez and his troops. The following year, Bernardo de Galvez attacks the city of Mobile. Once again, he is hit by a storm, once again, that does not stop him, and once again, he defeats the British. He does ask for help from Cuba. He says, we have the military now. We need to attack Pensacola, the capital of British Florida. Unhappily, the Spanish generals in Cuba say, no, they can't offer him supplies. And because of a lack of a Spanish fleet to take Pensacola, Galvez, literally sails to Havana, and in the face of generals who are twice his age, he demands their help. His uncle, Jose de Galvez, sends him a fleet of ships from Europe. And with that fleet, Galvez recruits his army from Louisiana and Texas, and he sails to Pensacola. Notice that the harbor of Pensacola is very, very narrow, and it is controlled by the Red Bluff Battery, controlled by the British, the Queen's Battery, and Fort George. Any ship trying to sail into the harbor is going to come under the guns of the British. The admiral of the fleet tells Bernardo de Galvez that he cannot enter Pensacola Harbor. Bernardo de Galvez sends a cannon back to the admiral and says, if you will not go, I will go in alone. And Bernardo de Galvez, with his little ship, the Galveston, followed by his soon-to-be brother-in-law, sails alone into the Bay of Pensacola. For that reason, he is going to be given the honor of saying, I alone have defeated the British. Now some say that Bernardo de Galvez's defeat of the English troops really didn't mean much, but it does keep the British from closing the Mississippi and the Gulf as a noose around the necks of Washington. And it also helps Washington. He prevents the British from coming to Cornwallis's aid at Yorktown, and at Yorktown, it is Galvez's help then, perhaps distant, perhaps a long way away, but it is Galvez's help of Washington that finally gets the victory at Yorktown. Because of this, Bernardo de Galvez then the following year, because remember, the American Revolution didn't end until 1783. Bernardo de Galvez then gathers another army and attacks the Bahamas 
and the following year he wants to attack Jamaica, and had it not been for the end of the war in 1783, in Jamaica they would be saying, Si Senor, instead of Yaman. The shield of the Count Galvez has the French fleur de lis because of Louisiana's French population. It also carries a little ship that has a flag that says, I alone, and he has the symbol of the cross of Charles III on his shield. Bernardo de Galvez, because of his work and his courage and his help for the American Revolution, Bernardo de Galvez's portrait was promised by Oliver Pollock, representative for Virginia, to be hung in the halls where Congress meets. Today, as of December last year, 2014, Bernardo de Galvez, his portrait was hung and the Congress of the United States in a unanimous vote made him the eighth honorary citizen of the United States. Thank you very much.